That's this okay. side. <laughs> you can just speak normally for me. Is that All right. One, three, yes. Two? One, two, three. And then Actually, you're going to stand over here and you can just talk to me so you can ignore the camera. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. Um, you can just look right here for one second. I'm just going to see. Make sure oh, okay. Glasses are Reflecting too much. Okay. Now just talk to me. All right. Okay. We'll just have a conversation. Start off, can you tell me your name, where you're from, and what you do? Okay. My name is Mary Ludwig, and I currently live in Farmers Branch, Texas, and I'm a school librarian. Okay. Where are you uh, from originally? Where are you born? Uh, I was born in Alvin, Texas, which is uh, in Brazoria County, outside of Houston. And uh, in 1963, I was attending Texas Women's University in Denton, Texas. So, I was very close to the <laughs> the, the scene of the crime again. <laughs> you tell me. Uh, my family actually uh, did not support his campaign, and uh, my f uh, as a high school student, I remember that I uh, did not support him, and my father was very, very uh, adamantly against his. Uh, campaign. My mother, uh, my father died in 65 and in later years my mother talked about uh, kind of wishing she had supported him or something and I remember once I made the comment to her and I said well you know you could have gone in the voting booth and voted for whoever you liked you didn't have to tell daddy who you voted for and she gave me this very funny look and I've often wondered if that's what she really did, and I found her secret out or whatever. But she was a she was a strong kind of independent woman, so I'm surprised that she wouldn't have uh, been open about it. But maybe you know, time changes people and and so forth. But that was that. Okay. Too much. I don't know if the camera can, but I can. So oh, okay. I'll be fine. Now. I, uh, I remember the day. And this may be going faster than you want to, but I, I was uh, a college freshman and I had come back from lunch and it was my habit to listen to the, new, the noon news uh, as we had our, they had a period of time where there were no classes, you know, for people to have their lunch hour and so forth. And I would sit down and write a letter to my family. And I was in the middle of writing this letter to my family when I heard the news that JFK had been uh, assassinated and at that time they weren't saying that he was dead they just said that he'd been shot and had run, been rushed to the hospital and I remember writing in the letter that people may not have liked him but he didn't deserve to be shot or to die and my younger sisters told me that even though my father had not supported him it was extremely upset with the, the turn of events and I would even dare say that most of the people, I don't know, there are always some diehards, but most of the people, even that didn't support him, of course, when this happened, rallied behind him and the country and um, and kind of forgot the reason they didn't like him, you know. So, uh, do, do you just want me to go on with other memories? Or, or well, um, uh, what do you feel now? Um, mainly when I come down, it's uh, I'm usually escorting some tourists who want to see the historical site. Um, I guess I will say that initially I believed that Oswald had acted alone, and it wasn't until, and when I heard people talk about conspiracies and other theories, I really ignored them because I thought it was just sort of nutcase things, and it wasn't until I went to an exhibit 10 or 15 years ago or something, and I looked at the part that's the so-called magic bullet thing where it shows what all a one bullet would have had to do, that I decided that it, uh, there had to be more than one person involved. And 
when I see it now, it's just, it's a historical event, the location of a historical event. I, uh, I wish that there were some way to reveal everything and actually know everything, but um, like an emotional feel or something, I don't. I, I think it's a sad reflection of times. And recently, in a Dallas paper, there was someone had suggested renaming a street for JFK, and I was truly very shocked that a few days later the Dallas Morning News printed a very hateful letter about JFK, and uh, and so forth. And I was I was amazed that people still carried hatred this many years later. So. What do you think about that effort to rename the street out here? Uh, I think renaming streets is so very expensive to the businesses along that location. I think a better plan would be to name something new if that choice were made rather than renaming something that has been in place for so very many years. Um, going back a little further mm -hmm. in time, do you know anything about uh, GB dealing with George Bannon? No, uh, other than the uh, things that I had to learn as a, as a local person and uh, a school teacher and would bring children down to here into Old City Park. So I, you know, I've read about John Neely Bryan and how they chose the name Dallas and that sort of thing. But what about uh, this dealer, the one that the statues were out here? Uh, George Bannerman dealer. Uh, complete lack of knowledge. <laughs> is he is he related? Is what is he, the father to John Neely or something or what? No, is he the newspaper guy? He started Dallas Morning News. News. Okay. <laughs> well, there we are. We're all fooled. <laughs> uh, so you've been to the museum many times? Um, I guess today will be my third visit to it. Sometimes the people that I bring down don't have the time or enough interest that they actually want to go through the museum. But I w uh, my, when my son was in high school, he and I became real interested in reading all these books about things. And so we visited it. And then I've uh, brought a couple from Russia that were very interested and I think read every plaque up there. And, uh, and today I'm bringing two Canadians that are very interested in seeing everything. And so what is your feeling about the museum? How do you think they did? Um, it's okay. As I recall, it doesn't include a lot of um, the conspiracy theories. It was pretty much going with the JFK uh, Oswald bent, but yet it gracefully threw in some other ideas, I guess is the best way to say it, and, and didn't totally ignore them. And it, as I said, it was, I believe it was well, I'm not sure because at one time there was an alternative museum in the West End that I went and visited also, so I can't promise which place I saw the, the bullet. <laughs> Is it in this one, do you know? I think they do have a background. Yeah, and, and it was sort of like after I saw that in a legitimate you know, spot, and I know that Congress a number of years ago had another analysis and came up with that it was not a lone assassin, but everybody ignores that. And just, you know, they're fixated on it with Oswald and that's it. And so forth. Um, yeah. Have you gone to this conspiracy museum? No, we plan to hit it today and see. And I don't know, I have no idea if they took what was over at the West End and put it in this, or if this is totally new things, you know, or what. Uh, as an aside, I was a personal friend of the minister who um, gave the graveside service for Lee Harvey Oswald. And I've talked to his wife about the letters they got after he conducted the funeral service for Lee Harvey. And uh, she knew she was dying and gave a lot of her papers, I believe, to the Sixth Floor Museum. What kind so. of things? Uh, 
Interestingly enough, a lot of people sent money donations for them to give to Marina Oswald because they knew that she would be struggling to survive. And they got a few hate letters, but they got a whole lot of letters of support. And her husband didn't feel one way or another politically, or if he did, didn't make it known to me. But uh, he said he felt like if a family wanted a prayer over the person they loved, body for death that they were, you know, as a human kindness thing to do that they deserved to have a, a service. And uh, and so I, I would have never dreamed of writing a letter to the minister and sending money to Marina or anything. So I thought that was a real interesting comment on American society that that, that happened. So. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> uh, I know at the time that, you know, the thought process behind the design, reading about it, but every visitor I've ever brought has been very disappointed in it and um, felt that there should have been something. And I know, and uh, let's say I've brought actually three young people from Russia, uh, two together and one separately. And he, one of them was extremely disappointed that there was not a statue of JFK. And as I said, every guest that I've brought thought that it was greatly lacking in what it should have. Um, were you living here in the area when Oliver Stone was filming? Yes. Did you see any of that? No. <laughs> no. But, uh, that's just not my style, and uh, no. Sorry. And then I know at one time I don't know if someone had a limo service uh, that you could ride around and pretend to be JFK, and they'd take you on the route. And that was happening a few years before the Oliver Stone did his movie. And then during the Oliver Stone time, I'm sure his business increased. And I'm I'm not sure if he's still in business or not. But I just thought. Uh, kind of crash to make a dime off of someone's death. Um, what, did you see the final film of Oliver Stone? On TV. Uh, and I thought it was poorly done because if he wanted to do it and present conspiracy theories, I think he would have done better to have presented uh, just one, instead of taking several different ideas and putting them all in as the same, and it and it ended up um, ended up kind of looking foolish or something, you know. And what was there were bits of it that were well done, but uh, I didn't like the way he put it all together. I think I think if he were going to do a documentary about the theories, he should have said, well, here's this one theory, and carried it from the beginning to the end, and then said, well, now someone else thinks it's this, and carried that from the beginning to the end, rather than taking the, I'll just say five or six theories, even though I don't know a number, and putting them all together as if they're one giant story. But perhaps for him it was one giant story, and I see it as <laughs> several different theories. But. Do you have any theories that you're more partial to? <laughs> well, my personal theory, is that there were all of these elements who were against JFK and wished him off the earth. And I think that they converged here simultaneously and after it became known that he was going to be in an open air car, I think they all saw their chance. And I think at least two of them took their shot, if you will, both literally and figuratively, and that that's why no one story holds true because if you go with Lee Harvey Oswald, then there are things that don't make sense. And if you go with this idea, then there are things that don't make sense. And the third one, and so that's why I kind of think that it so happened that more than one happened simultaneously. So they weren't working together with each other? Like that's what I think. But, you know, what do I know? I haven't. I've just read a few books, you know, and uh, 
And I think, well, then why hasn't someone else, if I'm so smart, why hasn't someone else seen this idea? So it's probably as crazy as theirs. <laughs> Well, as I recall, the Warren Commission came out that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone, and subsequently the U.S. Congress, who has access to more details than I ever would, said no, that there was surely someone else beyond him. And that's what I believe, that there was at least either someone helping Lee Harvey, and there were actually two, you know, in that organization there were more than one person, or it was two different groups who happened to do their thing at the same time. And I don't know that the subsequent Congressional Committee ever identified who they thought the other might be. They just said others other than Lee Harvey. And that's what I believe, that someone that uh, Lee Harvey either very surely was involved or someone sure had set him up to you know, make it look like he was the guy involved, but that there were others of some nature involved in in doing the crime. So, do you think the Warren Commission was done in good faith? Was it just inaccurate, or possibly for the times, and possibly because they uncovered things that they didn't want the general public to know, because. Uh, I don't think that our government, well, I know that our government doesn't always tell us the complete truth about everything and that there are things working politically in probably almost every instance that we're as a nation involved in that the general public's not made aware of. And I have no personal theory on what they would or wouldn't be hiding. but. I don't, they probably knowingly didn't reveal everything. Have you uh, read this plaque out here? Yes, and I noticed that several people um, uh, have scratched the word allegedly. <laughs> have you noticed that? But underline it. And that's, I guess, as it should be. Well, I didn't notice it today. I knew that it had been there before when I brought someone down here, and I didn't easily notice it. Uh, and I, you'll have to, when we finish, you'll have to point it out to me so I can point it out to my uh, the young girl that I'm bringing because she's she wanted to know the exact spot, and so I said, "Well, here's a general location." So. Jimmy. Uh Uh, I don't think, let's see, after his death, a lot of things that he had proposed, I believed passed because of his death. And because... Um, Well, let's see. When uh, LBJ came into power, LBJ had been in Congress so long, he knew how to get people to do what he wanted them to do. As vice president, he would not have had the power to do that, and it would have been all up to JFK to sell his programs and get things done. And if you've read very much about the two men, they weren't the best political partners ever. And who knows what uh, LBJ would have done to help him get the program through or not. You know, one will never know that. But I believe that after JFK died, that it became almost to say, well, JFK wanted this, and so everybody was ashamed to fight against the wishes of the dead man. And so I think a lot of things passed. And maybe they also passed because LBJ was now maneuvering Congress to vote the way that he wanted to. So I think that some of the things that 
JFK had wanted might not have been done if he had remained president. Do you, uh, do you think that in the future people will continue to come to Dewey Plaza? To yeah. Oh. oh, yes. Uh, Lincoln's been dead, what, 150 years? And people still, still go there. I think that this is a very or was a very, very, very powerful place in American history. And historians and political affectiondos will continue to uh, revisit and restudy it as long as we have a country. And maybe, <laughs> maybe even after, you know, <laughs> should our country collapse, I think then they might revisit it and, you know, uh, an analyze the corpse. <laughs> Mm -hmm. happened, you know, that, then the rest of that weekend, you spend watching television? Yes. Uh, as I said, I was a, a freshman in college. My roommate was from Wisconsin. When, when we heard the news, everybody was just uh, traumatized and struck dumb. Uh, classes were canceled, of course. Um, We watched TV all the time. Sunday morning, I decided to, uh, my roommate became hysterical. I, and I thought her reaction was, uh, you know, even back then, I was shocked at her reaction because she was sobbing and crying as if it had been her closest family member. And, And, and she said she'd never known anyone who died. I'm from a very large family, and I had attended family funerals. Of, and, and so while I was, I was upset, I was grieved about it, but I wasn't reacting as if it had been a personal family friend. And I remember kind of worrying about her reaction. And I don't remember now if there were any, I think it was too soon for any kind of a memorial or anything. But Sunday morning I went to church with her because her church was going to say something or do something or I just went as uh, comforting her or something. But I remember we came back from church and walked into the dorm and either actually saw the uh, shooting of Lee Harvey live, because I don't think they had instant replay <laughs> in those days. And then it was, it was kind of a scary feeling about what is what's happening to our country and what is going to happen and are we going to be in what will really eventually be a revolution or you know just it was a very unsettling feeling and now to tell you the truth I can't remember when we resumed classes at TWU but and I don't I don't remember a memorial service but there must have been something done but I, I don't remember that it was all kind of surreal sort of times and things happening and I remember trying to get a newspaper and they would be sold out before we could ever get to the newsstands but uh, in those days there would be one TV per dormitory and so we'd all have to cluster in the living room to it was the TV was actually physically located in what we call the parlor which was hardly bigger than the room we're in now and I guess they couldn't physically move it into the larger room because of the antennas and the hookup, but we, you know, crowded around, and of course people listened to the radios and so forth. I think that was uh, my general question. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, mm -hmm. do you have any uh, political leanings, persuasions? I consider myself an independent. Uh, my family's always been very interested in politics and talk about who's running and pros and cons of things. Uh, I'm very liberal on some things and mo more moderate on others. Uh, 
moderate, I guess, is as close as I get to, <laughs> to the right. Uh, as a child, my family did not like LBJ, and then as I got older and I read some things about him, whether you agreed with what he wanted to do or not, and his goal, you have to admire the way he knew how to work the system. And I suppose he would be, uh, like many others that were long time in Congress, a really consummate politician as far as knowing how to work the crowd and how to... Uh, are you gonna, I've had people say to me, well, the trouble with you is you're too much of a Republican, and I've had other people say, well, the trouble with you is you're too much of a Democrat. So I think I must be still, you know, balancing the terms, but I suppose all in all, I guess I would have to be more uh, now politically aligned with the Democratic Party than, than what's happening with the Republican Party. Uh, I remember as a youth, I was more active in supporting Republicans but they've become too, too right-wing leaning for my taste. <laughs> the last thing I can think of is, uh, did you ever encounter people who held a grudge or had something against Dallas because of what had happened here? Not personally, but we kind of talked about that with my friends as we came up the street, that I never really understood blaming a city for something that an individual did. And uh, perhaps if people felt that way since they knew that I was from the place, they wouldn't have said it to my face. Uh, I was surprised, I was living in South Carolina once and I was working a temporary job and so the people, or this man in particular, didn't know where my roots were. And he came in and he had been living there, relocated away and now was coming back. And they said, he took his lunch hour to look for a house, and they said, did you find a house? And he said, I found the perfect one. And they said, did you put a bid? And he said, no. And they said, why? And he said, I'd be living next door to Texans. And I was shocked. I was, I was just shocked. And I didn't say anything. And at the time, I thought, oh, wow, this must be how a minority feels. And, and I, I, I wish now I'd had explored, you know, probed the man, but I didn't. And... Uh, so I don't know, and I was surprised. The letter I mentioned that was in the Dallas Morning News a couple of weeks ago, I was just appalled that, that there were feelings like that. But if I, you know, I haven't personally had anyone say anything. I am surprised. Uh, I've traveled in Europe in several countries, and if you say you're from Dallas, they immediately will say, oh, where JFK was killed. So I think that that's, that's really, a bit, a bit surprising to me that others know that much about our history, especially after this much time has passed and it, and it was young people. For, uh, for example, 20-year-old Russians. Uh, that, that surprised me. Is that the primary association they have with Dallas? I guess, if that's the first thing they say. Wouldn't, wouldn't you think, you know, if, if that's their first response back? And I know uh, I met up with uh, some people in Switzerland, uh, actually distant relatives, and we were meeting them for the first time, and so I'd taken along some picture postcards from Dallas. And the minute I, I, I brought one for the, the assassination site because people are always interested, and immediately the cousin said, oh. And then they went on to tell me that they had seen, there's a documentary I think now has shown on American TV, but for a time it was only shown in Europe and not here, and they had seen that one. So. It's something about the JFK assassination, and it talks about uh, the conspiracy and why, uh, why it's felt that Oswald wasn't alone. But I don't know any specific title, I couldn't tell you. And as I said, I think it's now, I think that has now been shown on cable in, in America, but in, this was in 93, I don't think it had been at that time. Is there anything else you can think of that I haven't I don't know other than just the, you know, the fact that, like I said, the, the things that kind of stick with my mind are the, the intense weeping that my roommate did 
as well as you know some others in the dormitory and and how that surprised me and I've wondered over the years if it was because would I have reacted differently if I had supported him in the campaign I, I don't know but uh, and it was an unsettling time so I think that's that's it <laughs> so, well, thank okay. you very much uh -huh.